Hi, my name is Karen Lobdell. I'm a Director of Product Management at Integration Point. In this role, I work on design and development of a number of Integration Point global trade management software solutions to ensure that they continue to meet the needs of an ever-changing global regulatory environment. Today's discussion is an update in a series that addresses the recent U.S. Section 301 actions to impose additional tariffs on more than $50 billion of Chinese imports. These proposed tariffs are the result of allegations that China has violated U.S. intellectual property rights and forced technology transfers from U.S. companies. On June 15, 2018, the United States Trade Representative released two lists of imported Chinese products to retaliate against China's unfair trade practices. This was based on the USTR's Section 301 determination that China's acts, policies, and practices related to technology transfers, intellectual property, and innovation are unreasonable and discriminatory and a burden to U.S. commerce. The administration is targeting retaliatory duties on $50 billion of imported Chinese products. The initial proposed list, which was released in April of 2018, included 1,333 tariff lines covering a broad spectrum of products that would be subject to an additional 25% tariff. This list was the subject of a previous public comment period that resulted in 3,200 written comments, along with 121 witness testimonies at the public hearings and 295 rebuttal submissions. The first of the two new lists released June 15th contains 818 tariff lines at an estimated value of $34 billion. The 25% tariff on these items will be effective July 6, 2018. It appears that what was removed from the original proposed list after public comment was primarily pharmaceutical products and consumer good products. The second list, which is a new list, contains 284 tariff items representing approximately $16 billion. This new list is designed to compensate for those items removed from the initial list while still allowing the administration to hit its targeted retaliatory level of $50 billion in Chinese imports. This list will be undergoing a public comment period as we saw with the initial list. Duties for these additional products will not go into effect until the USTR completes the comment and hearing process and publishes its, its final list of additional products. So let's look at the timeline. June 15, 2018, the USTR published its Federal Register Notice including a request for public comments and a notice of public hearing. June 29, 2018 is the due date for filing requests if you wish to appear for the public hearing and a summary of expected testimony that you would be giving at that public hearing and also for filing pre-hearing submissions. July 20th, 2018 will be the due date for a submission of any written comments. And July 24th, the Section 301 Committee will convene a public hearing in the main hearing room of the U.S. International Trade Commission in Washington, D.C., beginning at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. July 31st will be the due date for submission of any post-hearing rebuttal comments. As with past hearings and public comment period, any submission should be done through www.regulations.gov referencing docket number USTR-2018-0018. Additionally, the USTR has noted that it will implement a formal process to allow for exclusion requests for certain products impacted by these additional tariffs. Details regarding such procedures will be issued within the next few weeks, but are not available as of today. Importers should carefully review the new tariff list to identify whether their products are included in the subject mer merchandise and consider the potential duty exposure. Companies should also carefully review the tariff classification 
of any potential subject merchandise to confirm that any potential subject products are correctly classified. Further, importers should evaluate whether changes in the company's supply chains may be implemented either to affect the tariff classification of the imported products or to move assembly and or production activities outside of China that would potentially result in a change of the origin of the imported product number under the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Substantial Transformation Test. It is important that companies organize quickly to submit comments and to prepare for the USTR hearing and comment period should they be wishing to participate, as well as identify any products on that first list, which is effective July 6th, that they will want to submit exclusion requests for. The timelines are tight, so taking a look at this right away will be important. It is critical for all companies involved in global trade to stay tuned and stay engaged as this process unfolds. Integration Point will be closely monitoring developments and will be presenting a series of videos and blog posts over the next several weeks on this topic to ensure that we keep our clients fully informed. Thanks for listening.